cops are on to Jennifer Pan. The seemingly perfect daughter is more like the daughter from hell living a devilish charade. She tried to kill her family. She snapped and began to devise the most devious scheme I've ever encountered. Police suspect she methodically hired three hitmen to stage a home invasion as a cover-up in a plot to kill her parents. The motive? Police say forbidden romance. Her parents told her the love of her life, Daniel Wong, had to go or she had to get out. Wouldn't it have been easier to just move out instead of trying to kill your parents? Rather than disappoint them, she decided to kill them. The problem with her evil plan? Her dad, Han Pan. He was shot in the face but lived and told police his daughter lied about being tied up to a banister during the attack. In fact, he told police that he actually saw Jennifer buddying up to the gunman who killed her mother. And that was the nail in the coffin. That would be the nail in the coffin, yeah. After nine grueling hours of police interrogation. Hey, I know this has been hell for you. You have gone through hell for years. Jennifer finally cracks. She says she's ready to tell Detective Bill Gates the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But it's not what anyone was expecting. You told these guys to come and kill you? She eventually kind of retreats, gets her head down, and then in a very low voice she says, um, it was supposed to be me. So we are supposed to take the whole family out? No, just me. Jennifer says she arranged for a hit all right, but she was supposed to be the target. It was supposed to be you. Because I didn't want to be here anymore. A suicide by proxy, Jennifer claims. She was so upset at not being able to see Daniel Wong, she wanted to die. She uh, said that uh, she failed uh, multiple times when she tried to commit suicide. So she decided this would be the way that she could meet her fate correctly. But cops wonder, was this just another lie from Jennifer? She had hired them to kill her. Yes. And they had shot everybody but her. Right. And then left. Right. Jennifer's attorney, Paul Cooper, says there's a simple explanation. So then what went wrong? What went wrong is she called it off and she had to pay a fee. These were real bad individuals. Cooper says Jennifer had a last minute change of heart, but the gunman still wanted the $10,000 cancellation fee. And when she couldn't pay it, they showed up and shot her parents. You know that also doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm, I'm not giving you money to do it. I'm giving you money to stop it. Well, I'm going to give you money to stop it if you're terrified of these people being actually monsters. Now cops don't know what to believe, so they haul in Daniel Wong for questioning the forbidden boyfriend. I don't know whether who was, who was behind it, right? I just know that her parents didn't want us to be, her family didn't want us to be together. And she loved you like you would love anybody. Yeah. Right, she loved you and it would do anything for you, yeah. right? And Daniel and Jennifer apparently didn't get their story straight beforehand. He tells investigators Jennifer indeed wanted her parents dead. And she's just like, don't worry, I got it. We now have her own boyfriend <laughs> acknowledging that she had sought to do this. Cops also discovered Daniel had given Jennifer a burner phone to contact the hitman. But Jennifer claimed the SIM card containing a history of her texts had mysteriously vanished. She seemed to have got rid of a SIM card in her phone, but she didn't get rid of the phone. And the police found text messages on the phone. Jennifer may have lied to police, but her phone records didn't. Cops uncover hundreds of texts between the hitman and Jennifer. Two of them read, I need time of completion. Think about it. Game time, November 8th. These are all texts that we actually had from her phone. But the most telling text dropped just minutes before the gunman killed her mother and shot her father in the face, saying, VIP access. 
Police are able to link the time of the text to this exact moment right here, captured on home security video from across the street. Police believe that's Jennifer turning the light in her bedroom on and off, signaling she's unlocked the front door, giving the hitman VIP access to murder her parents. Had the father not survived and had the phone messages not been found, the question remains open about whether she would have been caught. Cops cuffed Jennifer on the spot. She was arrested for the conspiracy and the murder of her parents, or her mother and the attempted murder of her father. Daniel Wong and the hitman are also charged. But which story would a jury believe? The suicide by proxy that went terribly wrong, or the daughter from hell who wanted her controlling parents out of the picture so she could have a boyfriend. I can't imagine a harder job than having to defend someone who has been seen as a pathological liar and then say, but this time, she's really telling the truth. Right, there's a difference between being a pathological liar, as some people have called her, and being a killer. This time, Jennifer didn't fool anyone. Jennifer, Daniel, and two of the gunmen are sentenced to life in prison. The third gunman pleads guilty to conspiracy to commit murder. Jennifer also receives a non-communication order, meaning she can never speak to anyone in her family again. But before she was carried off to prison, her father did address her, saying, I hope my daughter Jennifer thinks about what happened to her family and can become a good, honest person. Her lies created this, and her lies were her downfall. Yes. Jeremy Grimaldi has now written Jennifer's story, appropriately called A Daughter's Deadly Deception. She masterminded one of the, one of the greatest tricks in criminal history. Although Grimaldi wonders if she'll ever come clean. You wonder at what point is this woman just going to stop lying and tell the truth. Jennifer Pan's story is not something you hear every day, so we brought in forensic psychologist Dr. Lou Schlesinger for his thoughts. Doc, thanks for being here as always. How common is this where a child kills their parents or has their parents killed, and why does it happen? Well, there's about 250 cases a year in the United States. 250. About, about that, approximately, depending upon the year, where a child, including adult children, uh, kill their parent. And the reason they do it falls into three basic categories. Either they were abused and they kill the abusive parent. The second is that they have severe mental illness and active psychosis. And the third is they have very significant antisocial thinking and they'll kill their parent for reasons like they want the parent's money, they don't like the parent's control over them, uh, they don't like the fact that the parent doesn't like who they're dating. Jennifer would seem to fall into that third category. There was a controversial interrogation technique used in this case, outlawed in some countries. Yeah. How do you feel about that technique? In the Reed technique, there's two aspects of it that are very controversial. One is the police use of deception, meaning the police can lie to a suspect to some degree, saying things like, your two co-defendants just identified you as the brains of the operation. That's controversial. We can't lie to the police, so the question is, why can the police then lie to us? The second aspect. Using police deception with vulnerable suspects, juveniles, mentally ill, and intellectually disabled. None of that applies really in this case. Was she fair game for the read technique? I think yes. This is not a good example of an abuse of the read technique because it was effective. The goal of, of an interrogation is not a confession. The goal of an interrogation is to get the truth. But the notion that the police can use deception is very distasteful to a lot of people, and that's the reason it's been basically outlawed in some countries. Dr. Lou, as always, thanks for dialing us in. I appreciate it. For more on this story, you can go to CrimeWatchDaily.com.